colors. What colors? When you ask someone to tell you about some famous directors, there are a lot of people that will say Quentin Tarantino, Woody Allen, Orson Welles, Akira Kurosawa, Andrei Tarkovsky, depending on their preferences. But there is one name that everyone says almost instantly, Alfred Hitchcock. Being one of the greatest film directors of all time and one of the most famous, Alfred Hitchcock has a huge filmography spent on 55 years. There are so many movies that were made by him and there are cult classics. You have Rope, Vertigo, Dial M for Murder, North by Northwest, The Legendary Psycho, The Rear Window, The Man Who Knew Too Much. There are so many that it's gonna take a lot of time to talk only about the titles of Hitchcock's movies. Anyway, the subject of this video is another film, a film that is a little different but yet so similar with other films made by him. A film that I wanted to see for a long time not only because it was a Hitchcock film, but also for the actors that played in it. And I am talking about Marnie, a 1964 film with an interesting story about a woman who makes a living from stealing from different employers and changing her identity in order to lose her tracks. A story about a woman who does all those sorts of things who is caught by one of her employers and blackmailed into a marriage. A story about a woman who does all this stuff, who suffers all those situations but who has a trauma and has to face it in order to be free. Like any other Hitchcock film, the story of Marnie has so many layers of understanding that are presented to the viewer in a unique and a classic way. For a film that is two hours long, there is plenty of time to properly develop a character, to understand its actions and to reason with it, to fall for it. And being a master of suspense and of storytelling, Hitchcock does not that only with Marnie, the main character, but also with Rutland, Marnie's mother, and with Rutland's former sister-in-law. And it does that in a way that makes you believe that everyone in the movie is a bad guy or it has some hidden plans. There are so many things with this film that are making the viewer to stay so focused on the characters and lose the sense of time. It's a Hitchcock film. Hitchcock knew how to manipulate and to control the story in a specific way, to mold his film to make you watch it until the end, to give you something new with simple and classic methods. The way the film is made is like a mix of a roller coaster of ideas and methods that complete each other's purpose and create the atmosphere and the story of the film. The way the film starts and it presents to you what Marnie has done, who Marnie apparently is, is a way for Hitchcock to tell you to pay attention to her, to make you have an interest in her story and evolution. With all these elements presented to you, like her relationship with her mother, an important element that shapes the motivation of her actions, automatically you start to feel sympathy for her. You try to understand her actions a bit. Then the film progresses to the moment when everything is starting to give you hints and ideas. Using different special effects, Hitchcock gives you ideas about what might be special regarding her. Through those methods and the way the story is told, the film makes you feel intrigued by the character, it makes you want to wonder what is actually wrong with Marnie. The way Hitchcock is playing with the suspense and your attention is so characteristic of him, and Marnie is one such example. Well, anyway, Marnie is a film that you are watching knowing what you watch. After all, it's a Hitchcock film made after he made the iconic Psycho. It's a film in which Sean Connery played after he became known as the iconic James Bond. It's a film with Tippi Hedren, who previously worked with Hitchcock on different other projects. So technically you know what film you are watching. You know what expectations you have about the film, and yet its magic makes you want to be surprised while you are watching it. In a way, it succeeds in doing that. There are two main elements that makes Marnie's story an interesting experience, her relationship with Rutland and her background full of trauma. Regarding the relationship with Rutland, Hitchcock is manipulating the viewer emotionally to make you think that Rutland has an interest in, in her and maybe he will leave her. But by the way the story is evolving, you can clearly see that Rutland loves her, or at least he is starting to love her after a while. If I can say it correctly, their initial relationship can be compared with the relation of a hunter with a wild prey. I mean, even Rutland says that his previous dream was zoology, that he found interesting the superiority in the animal kingdom. In other words, well, more like a metaphor, 
Hitchcock presents Barney as a wild animal, an untamable thing who does all those things and cannot be stopped. On the other hand, Rutland is presented as this smart man who easily realizes who Marnie is and, and his hunting interest is triggered. And catching Marnie in the act of stealing, this gives Rutland the advantage of the hunter upon the prey. He forces her to marry him instead of telling the police. This relationship is presented as abusive at the beginning. Somehow Hitchcock lets you believe that Rutland forced himself upon Marnie, and then he shows you the fact that she wanted to kill herself. But the weird fact is that after that certain moment, their love somehow grows stronger, and you can realize by the way they act that they really care for each other. You can see that Rutherland is trying to understand Marnie and to help her to be better, to beat her trauma and tries to get closer to her. But this relationship has a powerful enemy, and that is Lil, Rutherland's former sister-in-law. Hitchcock presents her as this woman who is desperately in love with Rutherland, but he doesn't have an interest in her, it has only interest for Marnie. So Lil is seeing Marnie as her rival and tries everything to get rid of her, including to expose her to a former employer from which she stole from. But when she sees that Rutland is helping Marnie and sees his interest in Marnie after everything that happened, somehow she submits. The dynamic between those three characters is quite interesting because the perspective of this whole situation is in fact Marnie's. More importantly, Hitchcock presents to you the whole situation like it's Marnie's perspective, but he gives you the details about Rutland and Lil directly, like they are their perspective, and even if they are small moments that develop the characters and change the feelings and the ideas, Hitchcock gives you enough details to understand the whole picture and all the characters and their reasons, their motivations. Hitchcock does not make you take a side in this loving triangle. He gives you the whole information to understand the characters much better. Another thing that is interesting regarding the character of Marnie is the representation of those two sides of her, the bad side and the good side. The bad is obviously related to her relationship with her mother. From the very beginning of the film it can be sensed the fact that there is animosity between Marnie and her mother. You realize that she might have something to do with her behavior and actions, you know, like Marnie is trying to be recognized by her mother. Which means, in a way, Marnie is a villain only because of her issues with her? Probably. But honestly, leaving that behind, you realize that Marnie has another side, a good side. Being initially presented as a villain, the film gives you the idea that there is an element regarding Marnie that makes her human, makes her vulnerable, and that is her love for her horse. Every time when she needs to get away for a while or to take a break, she is with him. This thing makes her to be more human, more likable as a person. But it is also the element that makes her almost snap again into her problems when the horse is injured and she thinks that the only way to save him is to kill him. If you see the horse as a plot element in Marnie's evolution, you kinda understand why she gets so scared and almost becomes what she was before. The horse represented everything that was good in her life before Rutland. The horse was part of her life in which she escaped, and when she wanted to get away from her life or to be happy. So it makes total sense for her to try to come back to the bad ways after she loses him. She didn't realize she had a new life, she wanted to go to do something that was so clear for her and safe, even if it wasn't a good thing. In my opinion, however, the horse was used very little as a plot element to make you understand this. It was used well in the moment of Marnie losing him, because in a way the horse represents her old life with the good and the bad. It was used like a transition. Probably I needed to see more of it to understand the meaning of the metaphor, but if I come to think of it, I think it was enough presented if you think that Marnie had such a complicated life and Hitchcock had to present a lot of information regarding her. Earlier I said that one of the most important things in the film's history is Marnie's trauma. Actually I think it's the pillar of the film. Every moment Hitchcock shows you the film is related to her trauma in one way or another. Using small hints and the use of the special effects, Hitchcock is giving you, as a viewer, an idea of what might be wrong with Marnie. Spreading all those hints across the movie, Hitchcock is keeping the viewer in constant attention. Of course, he gives an idea that it might be related with her mother from the beginning, but using those quick cuts in which he shows you a red screen or the moments when Marnie is getting scared from lightning, or the moment when Marnie freezes over and enters in a trance state every time there might be an intimacy with a man, all those moments are like pieces of a puzzle that initially do not make any sense. And specific to Hitchcock, the mystery is revealed in the end. Personally, I think it was a little bit exaggerated that Rutland somehow realized everything and tried to make Marnie regress in age in order to realize her trauma and problems, but I think it's understandable given the fact that Rutland tried to help Marnie and to the fact that he tried to understand her and understand her behavior almost from the beginning of their relationship. 
It is quite easy to understand this film if you have previously seen another film made by Alfred Hitchcock. There are some patterns that Hitchcock uses regarding its storytelling or the characters. In the case of Marnie, Hitchcock is using the pattern of a female blonde character and the theme of a character with mother issues. Those two themes were used previously by Hitchcock in his movies and somehow those themes are presented in the beginning of the film. And if you know how Hitchcock worked, it could be considered that those themes are, let's not say it a spoiler, but it can be considered as a hint to what might happen into the movie. And with the use of the special effects and interesting editing skills, Hitchcock presents a simple film with a simple story in a masterpiece. The way he uses the special effects in order to present ideas to the viewer and the way he edited the film in order to create suspense and unsettling feelings makes you realize why Hitchcock was known as the master of suspense. Also, there are some moments in the film when you hear nothing. You can only see the action of the scene. According to the story, the moment is used like that because of a character who is deaf. But if you think it as a creator, the moment is so brilliant. It makes your heart rate go up, the suspense is incredible, it makes you think that she will get caught right there. Hitchcock knows how to play with those things and he presents them every time he's got a chance. Come to think of it, even though the cinematic style is classic and specific to a time when a film was made as artistic as possible and simple at the same time, I start to think about the film in its entire essence. What makes Marnie to stand as a good film? Is it the story? Are the moments of the suspense? Are the moments in which Hitchcock messes up with the viewer's head? I think they are all of the above. Let's face it, the story is as simple as possible. A story about a woman with a dark past forced by a man into a marriage for some reasons. But somehow the film stands on its own and gives you more. The main idea of the film is later set as a side element. After a while, you as a viewer start to feel empathy towards the characters, towards the situation, and into the subconscious you receive the message of the film, you realize that what is wrong and what is good in both sides of the situation. I think that in his genius, Hitchcock presents to you a story with a powerful impact, making you realize its meaning and purpose without showing the message into your eyes every second. He raises the alarm, he tells you what's wrong at the right time, but he does not do that in an extreme way. Probably it is the time the film was made or probably it was Hitchcock's artistic choice and method, but it was a good idea to present a meaning in this style. It is more subtle and easier to understand it that way. When I started to watch Marnie, I knew there were a lot of ideas, messages and methods that made the film what it is. I knew it would be interesting and complicated on one side and so easy to understand on the other side. There are so many messages that can be understood by anyone in any way they want. The abuse in a relationship, the childhood trauma that changes a person, the love triangle idea, it's all there. I think that when he made the movie, Hitchcock put all the little elements, all the little themes on the table for the viewer to explore them. And being a Hitchcock film, you know that you will get something special to watch. I feel like I'm repeating myself, but it is hard to talk and to explain on fast forward all the little things that are with this film. Simply put, let's just say that Marnie is way ahead of its time. It is a film that probably if it will be made today, it will not be made poorly. It has a special flair that makes it special in its own way, and it's a film that has to be watched a couple of times to understand it. That's a Hitchcock film in a nutshell. I don't know, just watch the movie and you will see what I am talking about.